Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Andrew and today we're going to be diving into how to process electric guitar. I've been mixing for almost 15 years and electric guitar still just has a way of being one of the more difficult instruments for at least me to mix. I think one of the main reasons why electric guitar can be so difficult is just that there's such a wide variety of tones that you can get from an electric guitar. You see some of the electric guitar players and they have 10 pedals on their pedal board all designed to, to change their tone in a certain way. They are compressing their sound, they are EQing their sound. A lot of times electric guitar players are doing a lot of the work for you as long as they're good. Over the years I've kind of come up with a few different techniques, both pretty simple and a little bit more advanced, that kind of work on pretty much everything. So just to start off, I'm going to show you what you can do with an electric guitar just with basic EQ and compression. So let's just take a listen to it without any processing done whatsoever. Look, we're already starting with a really good sounding electric guitar. So I like to start with an EQ and probably do a high pass filter right around 100. I, I tend to find that in most cases, the stuff below 100, it's just kind of rumble that isn't necessary for an electric guitar. And I've seen some people go up to like almost 200. I feel like you're kind of losing some valuable information there with that. The next step I would typically do is listen for something that sounds a little nasally or something that is kind of clouding the overall tone. Certainly in a lot of guitar players that are less experienced, they have a not really well EQ'd tone and then they kind of put that into reverb and it creates this kind of just clouded sound that you can kind of help a little bit sometimes with some EQ in the mid-range. So I'm looking typically between probably 400 and 800. This one doesn't need a ton of work, but I still think the general concepts are going to be transferable. All right, so I'm just going to grab this band, make it kind of narrow. See there, it kind of sounds like it's resonating a little weird. Just a small cut. So before and after. It's really minor, but things like that will add up, especially if you have multiple guitars in that same area or just generally instruments in that mid range. What I'm really looking for is things that abnormally are resonant. So when you boost that much, you're able to see like some areas don't really sound that crazy and then certain things will really pop out. And those are typically the things that you want to tame a little bit with EQ. The mid range is so critical and so even small EQ changes in that area can really help things work together. Now this particular guitar part doesn't really have a lot of harshness to it, so I, I'm not really gonna worry about this too much in this particular example, but a lot of times electric guitarists will put a lot of like really sharp pieces in the tone, and sometimes that's great, but a lot of times it's just a lot. And so I like to look somewhere between one and 4K for things that just hurt and turn that down. Again, I'm not gonna do that here because I don't think this part needs it and I want that area to stay full and alive. We're not trying to change the tone a ton. We're just trying to make sure that it fits well into all the pieces. In this particular example, I actually am feeling like it could use a little bit more just sparkly bits. So diving in, if we take a listen here, I think maybe adding a little bit of like eight to 10K Take that out, add it back. Yeah, it's subtle, but it's nice. Again, this is kind of a calmer electric guitar part, so I'm not really worried about harshness, but going kind of higher in that eight to 10K range allows you to get some brightness and sparkle without the painful harsh frequencies that kind of live more in that one to 4K range. One more step that I sometimes do is a low pass filter. So this again depends a lot on what they're giving you, but if there's just a lot of really high end sizzle information that's kind of distracting, I will sometimes use a low pass filter. Uh, I typically like a 12 dB per octave filter and if I want that in general, I'm probably gonna aim for something around like 12K and just see how that goes with or without it. If it's really aggressive, I've gone all the way down to 
6K, 7K before and had it been really nice to kind of just smooth that stuff out. Another thing a low pass filter can do is make the guitar feel just a little bit further away. It takes away just a tiny bit of that super high end detail and just kind of sets it back in the mix a little bit. That can be nice or it can be something you don't want at all. So this isn't something I always do, but it's good to know that the option's there. I don't think we need it for this song, so I'm just gonna turn that low pass filter off. We started with good tone already, so we didn't need to do a bunch of EQ, but as a general statement, those are the areas you wanna look for. Take out some resonance between four and 800, maybe find some harshness between one and 4K, and maybe add a little bit of brightness around eight to 10K. You don't always have to do that, of course, but these are the general areas that I find I go to most often when I'm processing electric guitar. Let's dive into compression now. The biggest thing to remember when it comes to compression with electric guitars is you don't always need to use it, especially because most of the time they're already compressing their sound. Because they're probably already coming at me compressed, I'm thinking much more about the tonal characteristics that the compressor is gonna give than the dynamic side of things. So what do I mean by that? I talked about this more in my video I did about how to process keyboards, um, but basically I can use attack and release to give the guitar tone either more poke so the notes stick out more or hide the individual note more and then make it feel either further away from me or closer to me. The faster the attack, the less the individual notes they're playing are gonna pop through. The slower it is, obviously, the more they're gonna stick out. And then with release, the faster the release time, the closer that guitar is gonna feel to you. And the longer it is, the further away it's gonna feel. So let's hear what that sounds like. So we're just gonna lower our threshold. Great, so these are both right now at very middle of the road settings. So if I take that attack and make it faster, you'll feel, you'll feel the notes kind of not sticking out as well. See how it all kind of like blends together and just kind of sounds like one block of sound? Now, if we do the opposite and slow that attack, those individual notes are really poking through a lot clearer. Now, let's do the same idea with release. So we're gonna take the release and slow it way down. Kind of feels like the whole thing is just in the distance now. And then if we take the release and make it really close, now the guitar feels like it's like sitting right next to you. This general concept translates to everything when you're using compressors, not just electric guitars. So this is a way that you can really master how to decide what attack and release settings you need on your compressors in general. All right, so that's the, the general basic take of what you can do to process an electric guitar. But what do I do if I have all my tools and want the guitar to really shine? Let's take a look. So the first thing I like to do is a little trick I learned from Joe Carroll where basically you're using a analog modeled EQ with the general idea being that you're not really doing that much EQ to it. It's an interesting concept, but basically you're driving the sound into the EQ a lot harder than you normally would, but trying to keep things generally pretty flat. So my favorite for this is the SSL EV2 plugin. With this, I basically set the top one at bell and then set all of these at basically plus nine. Uh, then I go to these middle two and set them both at like 0.66. Um, and then I set the output gain back, you know, how, however much it needs to be to level match. This is definitely something that you have to play with a little bit for every individual thing, but I ended up taking the mid upper band and setting it about 1.9K and then this lower mid band at about 900 and it just sounds great. What it does is it really gives it a sort of like analog depth to it. So take a listen to the before and after. It is pretty subtle, but I tell you, that makes a really big difference in just allowing the instrument to just pop out of the mix. The next step I like to do is a little bit of dynamic EQ. 
So my favorite dynamic EQ is F6. And with this one, I basically have a few different things happening. So I'm just gonna play it and let you see what it's doing. So here's the before. After. I really like what this did and having the dynamic pieces there just made it a little smoother. It made it so that when the high end isn't really being played, it's putting it there. But as soon as he plays in a way where that's no longer necessary, it compresses it back down and basically turns it off. I actually did a more similar EQ than you might think to our previous example. So in this kind of, you know, eight to 10K range, there's still a boost that you'll notice doesn't really move ever. Um, in that kind of 500 range, I have this one here that is doing a dynamic cut. So that made it so that only when those kind of honky, weird, awkward sounding frequencies are there, it cuts them. And then I added a little bit in that one to 2K range that is really moving quite a bit. Here, let's play it again. If anything, it's really just emphasizing the tail of the guitar a little more. So he hits the note, it basically ducks down almost to where it originally was for the individual hit of the note, but as it rings out, it kind of brings the prettiness and the brightness back up. I think it makes a really nice difference here. Now the last thing I did is a bit non-traditional. Uh, I'm using Waves Vocal Rider on the electric guitar. It just does magic for keeping the guitar present while not having it ever be overwhelming. Take a look at what this is doing. So here's the before, and then after. It's really interesting, the way it brings the tails up is really nice, especially for when you're listening to it in the context of a full mix. When you're looking at it just like that, it kinda almost seems a little bit overdone. Later on, I'll play this guitar part in the context of the full band, and I'll leave this vocal writer plugin open so you can see what it's doing. In the context of everything with all the other instruments happening, it doesn't feel overdone. It actually just makes the guitar feel like somehow you can always hear it even though it's not all that loud. It, it, it's a great trick that works a lot of the time. Now the final step to a great guitar tone is reverb. Most of the time I like to ask electric guitar players to not give me a ton of reverb. I want it to be on the lighter side of reverb so that I can add my own, especially because I want it to make sure that it fits with the rest of the feeling of the song. I wanna be able to shape the tone of that kind of final reverb sound to be able to really make it lock into the rest of the song. So for this, I used my favorite all-purpose reverb, which is the FabFilter Pro R. Uh, it has a ton of really incredible presets. I just went and selected small and then glassy guitar room, and you know what, it sounds great. So if we just, here, I'll turn off the EQ that I'm doing, that I'll show in a second, but if we just take a listen to only the reverb, it sounds like this. All right, that is actually how loud I have it, but I'm gonna turn it up just so you can hear exactly what's happening. Yeah, that's nice. I did also do just a little bit of EQ on the reverb. I basically just took away a little bit at 1K and a little bit at 2.5. Those are very general frequencies that I regularly do. Those are just kind of the harsh frequencies. And so let's see the before and after of that. Before. It's just a lot smoother sounding. One other thing I did um, just because I happen to be mixing this in Atmos and then converting it back down to stereo, is I do have it um, set to sound like it's kind of behind me, and then I did also pan it a little bit to the right. So I have the guitar a little bit to the left, and then the reverb a little bit to the right and behind me. So I'm kind of trying to go for a sound where the guitar is coming from over here, 
and then I'm almost hearing like a, a back wall reflection in the room that I'm sitting in. All right, I'm gonna put that reverb back at its normal volume and then let's just do a before and after of what the reverb is doing. So here is before. After. I think it adds. I think it gives it another bit of like a 3D-ness to it, and I really like that. It helps it pop out of the mix better. Now I'm just gonna play it in the context of the rest of the band playing, and I'm gonna open back up that vocal rider just so you can see how much it's doing and how transparent it is actually within the context of the rest of the instruments all playing at the same time. So yeah, that's pretty much what I do with electric guitar. If you're interested in trying out any of these techniques, I will have links in the description to check out these plugins. I'm pretty sure most, if not all of them, all have a, a free trial. So you can download them, try it out, see if you like this, and if so, great. If not, whatever. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a like. It really helps the algorithm share this with more people. And leave me a comment and tell me what you think. If you have any techniques that you like to do, let me know. I love learning from you guys. I've learned tons of things just through the comments of my own videos. So let me know. If you like this type of content and aren't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.